be using a generative AI technique based on generative adversarial networks. And for this purpose, we are using the OCI data science service. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get the data into the environment, which means we are connecting to the autonomous OCI instance, and we are pulling data from that source. In our case, we have the companies table and the transactions table. And after pulling it into the Python environment on OCI data science, we can see that we have 200 rows in the companies table, which means 200 companies and 1000 rows in the transactions table. Now for our purpose, we will want to enhance the data on transactions. So using the generative AI technique to increase the number of rows while keeping the same patterns there. And for this purpose, we are using the CT GAN synthesizer, which is a generative adversarial network based technique specific for tabular data. And we are setting the goal of enhancement to 10,000 rows, which means from initially having 1,000, we are going to go 10x up to 10,000. And again, this model will keep the same patterns in place, which means you are enhancing data without changing its base qualities. And if we again have a look at the data that's been created, we can see that for companies, obviously we didn't touch this, it still has 200 rows, but for transactions, now I have 10,000 rows, so 10 times more than what I initially had. And the last step we need to do is we need to write this data back to the database. So again, via the OCI Autonomous Connection to OC Data Science, we are pushing the data back to the database and saving it as tables. After having received the data into the autonomous instance, what we want to do is we want to check if the enhancement is uh, was correct and it's appropriate to our purposes. So we are using the OML notebooks, Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks interface for this. Again, a notebook-based interface, and we are accessing the tables which were written from the OC Data Science instance. And after having some a look around, what we see is we have indeed the TF Companies table with 200 rows and the TF Transactions table, which now has 10,000 rows. So our goal of enhancing data was reached. You can also see some details around some of the consistency items, like for example, the transactions that this table was enhanced, but it kept its consistency in the sense that it has an, a unique ID, transaction ID in this case, which is 10,000 different, so distinct values for the corresponding 10,000 rows, which means the enhancement is consistent in this sense. And some of the other parameters look to be similar. And we are going to be using this data further to basically reach our goal of detecting tax fraud. For our next step, we want to create a property graph, so model a property graph model based on the transactions and the companies in our data set. And for this purpose, we need to slightly transform the data to make it very easily easy for the graph engine to, to create the graph. And for this purpose, we are still using the OML Notebooks interface. And after doing some very minor transformations on the data, we are writing the tables in a slightly different format. And importantly, we are creating the constraints within the tables. So primary keys and primary key foreign key relationships, because based on this mini schema, the graph engine will be able to create the graph a lot easier. Now, obviously, in our case, companies would consist in the vertex tables, so the nodes in the graph. So we have a companies table with, which holds the company's information. And then we have the transactions table. And based on these transactions is how the edges will be modeled. So relationship between node and node. In our case, a transaction links a company to another company. And we are creating, as, I, as previously mentioned, the primary keys for the base table. So the company's table, the transaction table. And we're also creating the foreign key relationships between the transactions table and the company's table in the sense that in a in a transaction, you would have one company as source and one company as destination for a transaction, which means there are two foreign key relationships towards the, the company's table. And based on this way of modeling, the PGX, so the property graph engine, will be able to easily model the graph and we are able to have our, uh, our environment created for further graph analysis.
for working with graphs, we are using the Graph Studio interface, which is also part of Autonomous Database. And after using the Graph Create Wizard, we are able to create the graph based on the tables we created earlier with the OML notebooks. So in my case, the graph has already been created here. So I, what I want to do next is I want to have a look and to inspect if everything is okay. And for this purpose, there is also a notebook-based interface here. So I'm attaching my current runtime to the graph. And we can see the graph is called text fraud. And then I'm doing some very basic sanity checks. Important to see the, the schema it used. So in our case, the vertices, which are the nodes of the graph, they have a company ID and a company name. So this was based initially on the company's table. And then the edges, which are the links between the nodes. We, the base uh, ID is the transaction ID. And then you have company to and company from. Got the pair of IDs, which tell us from what node to what node the link is created. And then some other properties, transaction amount and transaction date. And we can also visualize the property graph. For this purpose, we are using the specialized query language, and we are going to be using it, this one further in the analysis. So I'm using property graph query language, PGQL. And what this does is it allows me to use SQL-like syntax with very minimal property graph-like syntax. So for example, the match clause, which allows me to define a certain pattern I am looking for in the graph. And the results can also be visualized. Now, obviously, this is only a paged visualization, which means this is only a section of the overall graph. But you can see that we, all, we, we it's already visible that we have companies which have cyclic behavior. And this is some of the patterns we are, be look, are going to be looking for when trying to investigate for fraud. Next, we are using the graph engine to extract some graph specific metrics. Particularly, we are going to be looking at pattern matching queries to try to detect some fraudulent behavior, but also running some graph specific algorithms, specifically centrality algorithms that give us the importance of a certain node in the graph, which in our case will, will tell us which are the more important companies as far as the interactions that they display through the transactions. So for this purpose, again, we are in uh, <clears throat> Graph Studio, the notebook-based interface. We are loading the graph. We create an analyst, which is attached to the session. This will serve us when running the algorithm specific to the graph. And we start with the graph queries. So pattern matching for certain behaviors modeled in our graph. In this case, for text fraud, we are looking at cyclic patterns of behavior. And this means transactions from certain companies that come round and reach the same company. So what, what we define as a one-step cycle would mean a series of transactions going from A to B and then back to A. And we are doing this via the PGQL query using the match clause and then the results we, we are getting here. And this will also be written back to the autonomous database in a table to further be used as part of our analysis. So this is the one-step cycle. We do the same thing for two-step cycles, so transactions growing from A to B to C and then back to A. And the other type of pattern, a three-step cycle, A to B to C to D and back to A. So three different ways of, of measuring cyclic type behavior, each with their own scores, and saving this to specific tables to be used further in the analysis. And then for graph algorithms, we're going to be using two flavors of uh, importance as it's measured in the graph context. It, the, uh, the term behind it is called centrality, and there are two ways of measuring it, between a centrality and closeness centrality. These measures tell us how important a certain node is in the graph. In our case, how important the company is based on the number of interactions it has. And <clears throat> We are running these algorithms across the graph. We are getting the scores, and then we are writing it back to tables to then be used for further processing. So after running the, the graph metrics, we have three measures of cyclic type behavior. So things would, that would be relevant for investigating fraud. And then we have two measures that give us the importance of companies in the graph. So that this will also give us the idea of how important and how much influence <coughs> 
a company can have, which is also very relevant when you want to decide on investigating or not investigating certain cases. The next objective in our analysis would be to use the graph matrix we just extracted from the graph model by using the pattern matching queries specific to graph and also the graph algorithms. We want to use all of those features in new models, ML, so machine learning models, to then be able to discern between companies and how they, how they stand as far as propensity for fraud, but also evidence of fraud. So the pattern matching queries will give us evidence of fraud, so cyclic behavior, which might sound fishy, and also the centrality scores of the importance of the companies in the overall environment will give us the propensity for them to be able to to the fraud and also how important and how impactful that fraud might be. But for this purpose, we first need to do a bit of data transformation again. So we are preparing the data as it comes from the graph uh, from the graph layer, and we are going to prepare it to serve the machine learning models. And for this purpose, if you remember, we had five different output tables from the graph. Three of them were related to the cyclic patterns. So cycle type scores, let's say, so three scores that would uh, uh, talk about the cyclic behavior, and also two scores which talk about the importance, so the centrality scores. In total, we have five scores per company, and what we are doing, we're, we are merging all of these in a common table, which will give us company ID, the company name which, had, we, which we had from previous, and also each of the five scores after normalizing them as well, because Further down the pipeline, we are going to be creating the machine learning models, which would work better if the, these scores are normalized. So from 0 to 100, what is the specific metric for the specific score <clears throat> corresponding to companies? And this is, again, we are saving this back to a table, and we're going to be using this in our further ML modeling. So now that we have all of the metrics that came from the graph layer, we want to create machine learning models for the purpose of detecting fraud. And we are going to create two types of models. One would be focused around the cyclic patterns we detected via the pattern matching queries. And the other would be centered around importance and how, and how important the companies are in the overall landscape. So this would be importance, an importance type model. Uh, in, in technical terms, we are going to create two clustering models for these two purposes. So we are going to be splitting the companies in five clusters based on the cyclic type pattern behavior we detected in the graph, and also five clusters based on the importance. So you can imagine this as going from very low, low, medium, high to very high as importance. And the same thing for the cyclic pattern. So if we had evidence of fraud via those cycles, we are going to be ranking companies in those five buckets. So very low to very high, let's call it a risk for fraud. And we do this using the Oracle Machine Learning implemented K-means method. We are setting the number of clusters, as I mentioned, to five. So we have two different models, one for cycles, one for centrality. So again, the cycles of ab abnormal patterns and also importance, the other model. And this will give us five labels one per company, so classifying them in five different groups based on these two ways of looking at the problem. So in the end, we have two tables, one for the cycles. So based on the, <clears throat> based on the clustering exercise for cycles, we have companies which are in cluster one through five, depending on how many cycles they had and how, how those abnormal patterns were detected. And also from the, per from the perspective of importance, so the centrality algorithms, we see that companies have been ranked, again, cluster one through five, based on how much, uh, how important they are in the overall graph. Now, intuitively, you can notice that cluster one has the lowest uh, values in the inputs, which means probably cluster one is the one with very low, as far as both importance and evidence of fraud via the via the patterns we, we, we were able to see. And probably cluster five is the one that has very high incidence of cyclic behavior and very high uh, importance 
which means those are probably the companies you would want to prioritize going forward with the analysis. And as you can see, this was all written in one single table. So I have a company ID. I have the five inputs I used for the models. Again, these three inputs, the cycles are giving us the cluster for the cycles. And the two inputs based on centrality are giving us the cluster for centrality, so for the importance. So I have two labels for each of the companies in my data set, which tells me how how much fraud patterns was I how many fraud patterns was I able to detect for that specific company and we give it a certain cluster for it one through five and then how important is the company as far as the graph interactions which, which were able to detect again one through five and I'm saving this back to the database as the results table and this will be further processed and analyzed in a more visual manner.